So hello and welcome once again to another firmware video but this time we're going to be taking a little look at something a little bit different which isn't usually offered to people logging on to Fanatec's website in the download section. So if you come straight onto the Fanatec website and we just go straight into the community section you'll see that there's quite a few things that aren't available. So let's just have a little look in there. So as we come into the uh, community screen, usually on the right hand side, you'll be able to see uh, numerous blogs that have been started or things that you can look at as you see them come up on the right hand side there. But it's not allowing us access to those. It's asking us to sign in. So you need to register an account to be able to get any further than this. Or you can also log in using your Amazon account, which is the way I usually log into my account. So we're back at the main menu now and I'm just going to log in using the Amazon uh, which is my usual way of logging in but if you've got a usual login uh, you could always go that route uh, but I just prefer to keep all my passwords in one place. So once I'm logged in uh, you'll be able to see that by going back to the community uh, section there's a few more things opened up for us. So here you'll see, just as we're connecting back in um, on the right hand side as, as was before, uh, there's a few more options available and this is what we're after. If you look down the published beta testing, you'll see that there are beta drivers or beta drivers, whichever you want to call them. And by selecting on there, we can look down to where we want to get. And if you look at the Fanatec beta driver or beta driver, beta driver V330, that's a little bit newer than the uh, 328, which I posted just the other day. So as that loads, you can it comes right the way down the bottom of the page. I, I have spent a little bit of time reading up through these or down through them uh, a little bit earlier today just to see what the testing's been like whether people are liking the driver, whether it's caused any issues with certain games. And I did think that it got quite a lot of good reviews, especially regarding uh, the motors running a lot quieter. Um, some people said that there was um, a little bit more detail through the feedback, but I think a lot of it comes down to the actual motors, um, the new firmware uh, within the programming for the motors seems to be working much better. So we'll just whiz up the page and um, I'll just leave it running. You can see, have a little read, pause it where you want to see what numerous people are thinking. And uh, then we'll move on to installing the software. So as we come to the very top of the page, which is the main thread, you'll see that there's like a, a little attachment down the bottom left hand corner. If we click on that, we can just uh, download the firmware. So once that's downloaded, if we just double click on the attachment as it's arrived, uh, you'll be able to see that it gives you the option to unzip it. Just at the top there. And it gives us two files. Obviously, they're just operating system files. So either if you're running a 32-bit operating system, you'll want the top one like I do. Or if you're running this probably on a larger PC, you'll want the 64-bit operating system. And again, it just goes through the same as we've done on the previous video that I posted, uh, just installing the software as it as it as it runs through. It's pretty pretty straightforward just to follow. You're generally just clicking on the next button. The continue button agreeing with the um, uh, licensing agreement and um, and so on you just click your way through it takes it takes my machine a little bit of time it's quite a slow machine but uh, just to speed things up a little bit I've uh, skipped over everything really and just going through the finishing stages 
and uh, finally it finishes and asks you to uh, restart the machine to make sure everything's uh, configured properly and uh, we'll take it from there. So again, once we're back up and running, we've, um, we're going to have to detach the USB that goes to the back of the Xbox One and uh, just bring that right the way around and plug that in on the left hand side of the machine or on my machine anyway. So yeah, it's just a single cable that comes from the back of the uh, wheelbase just straight into the side of your laptop or your PC or however you do your updates. And once the wheel's finished, it's powering up. You'll see that it's still running 6 to 8, 18 and 30. Now, we updated the wheel yesterday, uh, but someone mentioned on my YouTube channel that there is 3.30 available. Obviously, I updated with 3 to 8 yesterday. So again, just switching it back into PC mode using the N and Y buttons. And as if you followed my other video, I'll go through it on this one because it's... Uh, I guess it's a new video, um, but just clicking on the Fanatec um, software, once you've got it switched into PC mode, it'll register. And like I said before, I always click the bottom one of the two that come up, and then you want to go into the properties menu. So once that's loaded up, you'll be prompted as before, your Club Sport Wheelbase 2.5 is not the latest one. Do you want to update it now? Well, yes, we do. So if you just click on that, it's fairly simple to follow. As, as before, the, um, the, the wheel will go into bootloader mode with the blue flashing light. And um, it comes up on the screen. Do you want to start doing the update? Well, yes, we do. So if you start firmware update, Click on the connect button and then the flash firmware will be highlighted on the right hand side and just click on flash the firmware. It will run through fairly a fairly quick installation and then it will start to go through the boot up cycle and the wheel will need recalibrating again and going through everything that we went through on the previous video with um, calibrating the gear selection as well and I'll just I'll just leave this running so you can you'll be able to see what I'm doing So yeah, obviously once it's finished, it says Cal on the screen and you're just going to turn, turn the wheels so it's nice and straight and right in the centre of the wheels, a tuning button. And as soon as you press that, you want to press the D-pad and the Xbox Home button at the same time. Once the soft calculation is done, you'll have to go through all the gears if you've got a sequential gearbox, just pressing P after you've made each selection and it'll then display on the next step to do reverse, first, second, third and all the way up to the seventh gear. And once that's done you're good to go. Obviously if you haven't updated your wheel software you might want to run through starting everything up again and putting it into PC mode just to check that your steering wheel is up to date. Uh, you'll see that on my previous video, which I'll put a link to in the description, or it'll be up on the top of the screen. But as you can see, the new firmware on the wheel is 639. Still with the same uh, driver or motor driver, but the, uh, the software is slightly different. So thanks for watching, guys. It's a very similar video to my previous one, but just showing you where you can get uh, the beta software rather than going with what's in the available download section. You might have some issues that you're not too happy with. And obviously they've got a new version coming out very soon. Uh, once all the testing is complete, there'll be no about be a new beta version. 
So it's up to you if you want to try it. Obviously, it's not tried and tested. So if there are issues with the beta tester, you could always uh, delete the 330 and go back to the 328. Uh, but just remember to delete that from your downloads. So yeah, thanks for joining guys. And until next time, ciao for now.